Well, let's talk about this for the next few minutes. Let's talk to Dr. Alberto Giubilani, who's a senior research fellow at Oxford University's Collective Responsibility for Infectious Disease Program and has studied ethics in vaccinations. He joins us live from Oxford here in the UK. And welcome here to the program. Do you share that assessment from the head of the WHO that we're on the brink of a, a huge moral failing here? Thank you for having me. Um, yes, I think there is a risk of a big moral failure if we don't distribute vaccines in a way that is both equitable and effective. We need to understand what it means to distribute vaccines equitably. Uh, so the WHO is concerned that poor countries will not have enough availability of the vaccine, at least in the short term. And that is actually a concern for poor countries it's a global concern because this is a pandemic, we are all in it together, and it should really be a concern of everyone to make sure that everyone has enough availability of the vaccine as soon as possible. Why are we in this place? Uh, I remember doing interviews nine months ago with the UN and others who were saying at that stage, if we get a vaccine, if we need to make sure that it uh, is shared equally around the globe. So why nine months later when we have a vaccine, are we still talking about it? Well, for the same reason why we talk about the same problem that arises in different contexts with regard to distribution of resources around the world. This is not just about vaccines, if you think. Uh, so it, it applies to many other issues. So rich countries, wealthy countries normally have more of any resource basically and that sometimes is a problem because it denotes a selfish approach sometimes a problem because a selfish approach has consequences for everyone so it, it makes sense if you think about for any country to prioritize their own citizen about any resource because countries have special obligations toward their own citizens so i wouldn't think that this is totally a moral failure this approach is understandable but we also need to understand that giving priority to our own citizen uh, comes with a cost in this case because viruses know no border. If we don't mitigate the impact of COVID-19 in poor countries, say in Africa, South America or anywhere, it's not the case that we are immune from the consequences. So vaccine nationalism has some justification, but it needs to be balanced against other considerations. How do you work against it, though? Because you have uh, the COVAX uh, group, which was supposed to actually work uh, to ensure that uh, every country got equal access. Uh, is it principally that the countries that have been involved in developing the vaccine were then able to put in massive pre-orders, so the, the Germany's, the UK's, the US's? Yeah, yeah. So where money is, where wealth is, uh, the, that comes with privileges, unfortunately. Uh, that's how you know, things are. Uh, but again, how do we get around that? Well, if you think about in the same way as we get around other problems having to do with inequalities, for example, every country, well, most countries destine part of their uh, revenue from taxes to foreign aid. So this is something we already do. We are already concerned about distributing wealth and resources across country in a way that is as fair as possible. And I think we should do the same with vaccines. So. Uh, I think it's justifiable to prioritize your own citizen because that's that's part of each government's duty. But in the same way as we you know, keep an eye on other countries in other contexts, like foreign aid, for example, yeah. so we should do it with vaccines. So the, the point of COVAX is, is, is the same, is making sure that this foreign aid translates into more, more equitable vaccine allocation. Well, we'll see if there's uh, further progress in the coming weeks and months. Uh, Doctor, we have to leave it there, but thank you for joining us here on the programme.